Hey guys, welcome. So I have a subscriber that is asking me, um, can I make my own image for the boot up screen for Grub, Grand Unified Bootloader? Uh, yes, you can. And um, it's not a light undertaking and I'm gonna be actually talking about some safety things because usually when you're messing around with your boot files, they can leave your system unbootable. So I would highly encourage if you're gonna do this, to watch this video in its entirety. Uh, if you need to watch this in multiple sessions, subscription is recommended. That way you can watch it at your leisure. So Linux is for uh, any age, but the name of my channel is Linux for Seniors. Uh, you should see an icon floating above your time and date if you'd like to subscribe. If you don't see that icon, um, then go find me on YouTube. Linux for Seniors, uh, 230 videos and growing. So welcome folks. Filming in 1920 by 1080. Adjust your YouTube player accordingly. So let me give you an example of this machine. And I have many computers and many hard drives. Most of my computers that I use for these filming demos are computers that I have pull-out hard drives. So um, basically, that's why I keep standard generic graphic cards. And that way, I can keep swapping them out for different Linux operating systems. This is an actual digital photo of my current booted in screen on this machine. It's using an eyeball instead of a black screen. If you have ever done this and seen your boot menu, you know what I'm talking about. It's usually a black screen with white text. Okay, and then a timer that counts down to zero. I'll come back and reference this a little bit later. But uh, to change this from the eyeball to something different, we're going to walk through that whole process today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, not leaving your system totally unbootable with some safety things. Because there's nothing worse than trying to change things when it comes down to boot files and your system becomes unusable. So let's talk about some safety things. First of all, I would highly recommend that you open and activate time shift if it isn't active already. But perform a backup perform a backup. So you can maybe use that to restore your system later. The second thing is, did you, um, did you upgrade from 21.2 to 21.3? If you did, do you still have the installation media? If you don't, go to Linux Mint and download a fresh copy and you burn it onto a DVD or a USB stick. There is a very simple tool called Image Writer so you can take the ISO, the computer image, place it in here, click on a USB stick and write to make yourself a fresh copy. And the reason for that is because of a one tool that's on there. And that tool is called Boot Repair. So I'm going to open up Software Manager because we're going to talk about some different software. So Boot Repair, this one here, is actually found on that installation media. The live copy of Mint, in other words. Hopefully you will never have to use that tool. But in case you do, it's about a 10 minute process. It's better than reinstalling everything. So the boot repair tool is found on your installation media and you can find it directly in the mint menu when you boot in, in live mode. Normally you don't have this tool installed with your installed copy. But boot repair will be there. Also time shift will also be there on the same media. So do yourself a favor, do a time shift backup and make sure that you have those disks just in case before proceeding with this particular stage of trying to replace images for your background boot screen. All right, if you are wanting to put your own photos for the boot screen instead of that black and white one, may I suggest installing this? Just type in GRUB. GRUB stands for Grand Unified Bootloader and look for Grub2 Theme Mint. There's another one here also that is called Grub2 Theme Mint 2K. It just adds another tab, but this one is sufficient. And what we're gonna do here after it installs is we're gonna replace an image with your own image, just to make this video simple for you, okay? So install this, this will not be installed. So install Grub2 Theme-Mint. The second thing you want, may want to install is a tool that can take images and convert them. Like GIMP, for instance. GIMP is a wonderful tool for that. 
and I'm going to show you an example of how to convert a JPEG to a PNG and also scale the images. So after you installed Grub2 Theme Mint, and hopefully you made yourself a backup already, um, that will be located in here under File System, under Boot. This is your boot directory. That's what, when you boot up your hard drive, it's going to look in here. And it will look under Grub, and uh, more importantly, it installs this folder called Themes. So Grub2-Theme Mint installs this folder. What's in here is a subfolder called Linux Mint. I'll just make it bigger for you if you like. And then it's going to have an image that looks like that for backgrounds. This image is an 800 by 600 and this is normally your default uh, boot up screen and it'll have white lettering going across. It looks like this one here but in black and uh, a black screen. So take this white text and transpose it over here is what yours will look like. All I'm doing is replacing this with this eyeball thing. All right, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So file, boot, grub, themes, Linux Mint, and this background. So what I did was I renamed this. I can't do it now because I'm not in root mode because everything that you're going to change in here has to be in root mode, but we're going to cover that also. But this file here is what it needs the name for. And whatever name you have here is what becomes your background. Under this theme.text, if you forget, is line three, desktop image. Background PNG, so that means you can't use JPEGs. All right, unless you do some severe altering, but I'm making this really simple, folks. It's easy enough to re, uh, take and convert a JPEG to a PNG. So you don't have to edit anything in here. All right, but that file is looking for that right there. That used to be that file, but I renamed it to this file. So that's my new image. This was my previous image. So all I did was rename that a background.png so I can keep it. In case I didn't like that later on, I can delete it and then rename that back to background.png. Let's talk about a tool in here. Find yourself a graphics tool like GIMP or something similar. GIMP is similar to Photoshop that you can convert images because you need to have it in a PNG format. So I'll open up GIMP here and uh, let's take a peek at some images here just using the file manager. So um, I already showed you that one. That's the one from my screenshot that I took with that digital camera of my actual booting screen for this machine, for this machine. That's what it currently looks like. Okay, but more importantly, I'm going to pick a different image. Now, some of these images that you have already, whether you want to use pictures of yourself, the kids, the pets, the friends, or some wallpaper off the internet, um, come in different formats and different sizes. So uh, let's take a look at Computer Guy for a second. It's open, file open, and um, pictures. Boy, lost my place there for a second. Computer Guy. So if you go to image and scale image, it'll tell you the size of it. This one is currently 1920 by 1080. Now this is a question I can't answer for you because I have no idea what your screen uh, resolution is and what, how big your screen is. But if you have a 4K screen, most of the time 1920 by 1080 will work. If your screen res is a lot less, then we may have to reduce that. And I'll show you those tools in a second. The other thing to think about, since we're gonna make this picture or something else into a background picture for the Grand Unified Bootloader, this right here, um, we're going to be dealing with white text. So white text sometimes can blend rather ugly with stuff that has white backgrounds. This might not be the most ideal thing unless I alter some things in here. Make it darker in other words or something. Alright, so I'm going to pick a different image. So I have a couple of choices. I could um, 
use that mushroom picture or I can use this mushroom picture. This one has nice green tones to it, so I'm gonna open this one. So this is a green surface area that will have the Linux Mint information. Let me close the back one. So just picture this white text going across here. When I get to this area here, I may have some blending issues, maybe. Or maybe down here also. But this is something you can experiment with. So the next question is though, since this is a JPEG, is how big is this image? And does a 1920 by 1080 work for you? You are the only one who can answer that. But let's assume that I have an older laptop, for instance, and uh, this image is too big. So it's maybe uh, 1024 by 768. So we can do the 1024 part. And is, when this link is on, when you click the bottom number, it'll convert that to uh, what it thinks it's scaling properly. So that's what that looks like currently. So that is currently scaled to 1024 by 576, but I want that 768. So how do I fix that problem? Well, do a first control Z, undo, image, scale, 1024 on the top, break the bond in between there. It just looks like it's severed. And then you can change that number at the bottom to whatever you want, 768 it is. And then this will make this a little bit taller. This will not look proportional, but it may work just fine for my grub screen, Grand Unified Bootloader screen. You can just picture the text in here. So if I was satisfied with that, 1024 by 768, then I can proceed to export. But in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a Control Z, which is convert that back to that scaling because this does work on my machine. I'm currently filming in it right now, 1920 by 1080. So I wanna leave that. So no scaling required on the mushroom. However, I do need to take this image because it is a JPEG and convert it into a PNG. That's done with an export as command. Export as, and then you change the tail end of this or you can just change the whole name. So if I wanted to call that uh, uh, mush, as in mushroom, dot or period PNG, that will make a, that image PNG. I don't want to save it in Paul's pictures. Paul is just a made up name, but uh, I'm going to stick it in downloads temporarily. Okay. So it's going to be called mush.png. I'm going to hit export. I'm going to keep the default, including the high compression. And that should work okay, I'm pretty sure. Now let's double check the image. And there's the mushroom. We can right click to double check the size of the frame. It's 1920 by 1080. All right, so we're gonna use that. So now that you have installed Grub2 Theme Mint out of Software Manager, you go find your file system, boot, Grub, themes, Linux Mint, and you're gonna put your image in here. Now, I did make mention of this earlier, but if I skipped over that, I do apologize, but this is in root mode. That means I can't add and remove anything in here unless I'm in root mode. So let's right click on the blank area here and open this in root mode. And we're gonna take the image from downloads and transfer it over. Okay. Now I'm going to make this larger for you, maybe too large. And we need to uh, change this name to background.png because this file is always going to be looking for that unless I make some bunch of alterations in here and we're going to try to keep this simple. So we're going to just convert that image to that name or this image to that name. But the, before I call this one background PNG, I need to convert the name of this one. Otherwise, it'll give me a duplicate error. So let's rename that first because that's my old one. So I'll add an extra B in front of it and that should take care of it. 
Now that's no longer called background PNG, that's called BB background. Now we can call this one background. Why am I doing it this way? Because it's simple that way, that's why. Because all, we, all we're doing is changing the background image. That's all we're doing here to make it simple. Because this file needs to find that image called background.png. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It just knows it needs to find that file. We went from the original that looks like that to the image that looked like that. And now we're going to have this one. So exit this screen for a second and reopen this to double check your work. And that's going to be file, boot, grub, themes, Linux Mint. And that is your new image called full screen, large, background.png. PNG, not JPEG, PNG, because this file is looking for that background PNG without the quotes. Okay? To make it simple. Are there different ways to doing this? Yes. But I'm just trying to give you one way that's simple. So now that we have that, we are going to close that and find terminal. Mine is down here. You may not have that though. So TER, open up terminal. In my case, I'm gonna make this bigger for you, filming in 1920 by 1080. And we're gonna type in that command. Super user do, sudo, space, update dash grub, update dash grub. And hit enter and put in your password. In this case, Paul is just a made up name, Paul's password. And you should see similar entries, similar. Not always the same. All depends on how your machine is set up. So maybe you have dual boots, maybe you don't have dual boots. As in my case, you can see that that says Linux Mint and then advanced options. That is because of Linux kernels. Advanced options, you can swap out kernels by clicking that line if you have them installed. All right, so that is all this is doing is updating the Grub Grand Unified Bootloader. But it does make mention of a theme that it found, which points to that theme.txt, and that theme.txt is pointing to this file right here. Boot Grub Themes Mint. I need to make it smaller, sorry. Themes. Boot Grub Themes Linux Mint Theme.txt. That's the file it's referring to. And that file says go look for an image called background.png to place that as an image. And that's what that is all about. So if you don't have and you uh, already rebooted and you uh, went through and you saw your BIOS and then it shows the green logo and then it shows your users and it never showed this right here it never showed this menu do you want it always visible if you do then we're going to edit this file right here the nice thing about when after you do a sudo update grub it will actually display this so you don't have to remember the path this will also display the path of where that other theme.txt is so now we're going to find this file right here because if you want to alter the time frame on this, whether it's five seconds, 10 seconds, eight seconds, whatever seconds, or you want to display the menu always as you boot, then we're going to look for that file right here. File system, etc., And we're going to type in D and default is right here. There's the file we're talking about right here. In here, there's a couple of things. Maybe you've seen some of my videos lately where I do um, some script files using bash, born again shell, and I pointed out to this is a pound symbol in the United States. That's what we call it. You can look that up on the internet. They may be referred to differently at other places, but that pound symbol means that it's remarks. It's just text. You're typing a description. Okay. Some people call it a hash pound symbol. 
may be called differently in different countries. But uh, the definition in the United States says pound. So that just means that this is all fluff. It's just stuff to tell you about this. And it's telling you to run grub update, which we're doing right here. But we're putting sudo in front of it so we can run that properly. All right, let's talk about these actual lines without the hash marks. But not all the lines, just two. So grub underscore timeout underscore style equals where's your setting. If it says hidden on it, that may be why you're not seeing your menu. If you don't see this menu here, you know, yours may be black screen, but if you don't see this menu here, um, maybe this says hidden on it. If it does, you can convert that to menu. You can type the word menu. And then here's the timer. This part here that counts down. You remember um, the way this thing works is if you don't touch your keyboard, it will boot into the first thing that is lit up. If you use your arrow key, then you can flip that over to advanced options, for instance. Or let's say this is a dual boot, Mint and Microsoft, then you'll see the, uh, some more entries in here. Or if it's a multi-boot, maybe there's multiple Linux distributions listed here. This is just a timer. And this is displaying the menu. And it's done through these two settings right here. This one here displays the menu. And this displays the timer. If you don't like 10 seconds and you want to change that to 8, you can do it this way. However, this is currently in read-only mode. That means I have no save button and no save button. I have a save as. That doesn't do me any good because you need to the actual save the file with the original name on it. So we need to close this. And we need to open this differently. So open up your file manager, go to etc, go to default, open that up. And before you click on the file, because this file is uh, has root permissions, you need to open this in root mode. Before you alter it, you can certainly make a copy of it. And that's what's in here. That's what this is. Okay. So there is Grub and it has got elevated privileges. That means I can alter things. May I make the suggestion you only mess with these two parameters, this one here and this one here only. I'll make that larger for you. Don't mess with anything else. If this says hidden on it, type in the word menu. If this says five seconds and that's not enough time for you, then put in something higher like 10 seconds, but maybe that's too long. I'll change that to eight seconds and hit save. And then I'll close and close. And then I'll re-verify my settings. Always check your settings after you do any of these kind of changes. These are important changes because they're affecting how your machine boots. Now you can see that it says style equals menu and eight. That means eight seconds is what I get when this thing starts counting down after this, you see the screen. This will keep counting down to zero. In my case, eight seconds, because I just did that. But I need to do one more thing. Normally this will be closed. So you open that back up and you do another sudo update grub. The first one that I did was to upgrade the image. The second one is because I wanted to update because I changed the timer from 10 seconds to 8 seconds. The last one that I did a sudo update on, I did it for this file. The previous one that I did it for was this image right here. So we're doing two things at once. If you want to wait until the end, you can perform that. But you can do this twice. It doesn't mess up anything. That way you know it's done. Otherwise, if you reboot the machine, you may not see the desired changes. So let's recap this. Um, back up your system with time shift. Make sure you have at least Linux Mint 20, 21.2 uh, or 3 
the installation disk to do a boot repair, preferably the, the system you're currently on because boot repair is found on that uh, DVD or USB stick. And then if you wanted to uh, make your own backgrounds, then install this tool, at least for this purpose. And uh, Grub2 Theme Mint. And then go and change the file here to whatever you want. Just remember it requires root permissions and whatever you use for an image, you need to convert it to background.png for a name if you want to not really do some deep dives in here. Whatever you do, if you don't save this properly, you will get some weird effects on your screens. Always double check your spelling. Always double check your work. You don't have to delete that image, just rename it. That way, if you don't like this image, you can always open this back in root mode and delete that and reconvert this by renaming that. Again, you have to be in root mode. Lots of different options to think about. Thank you for watching.